Hi, today um, I will be talking about writing the introduction in your intro. I'm Sherwin Lai, I'm the interpretation captain in Submission Debate for Bellarmine for the 2019-20 to 20 school year, and I'm excited to bring to you this virtual presentation. Now, what is the introduction? So the introduction is a paragraph that you write in your own voice, um, and it comes after the teaser. So after usually the first scene around one minute, one minute and 30 seconds, You'll come out of your character and you'll deliver the introduction through your own voice. And it is something you write, not from the original author. It basically is just a paragraph that contextualizes the piece and informs the audience why they should care and what they might be able to get out of um, your presentation after they leave for the day. That's how I like to think of it. Um, it would need to identify the source material at the end. So you need to mention the title of the piece, the author, and then for OI, um, the co occasion, place, and date of the original delivery. For example, if it was a commencement speech, you would state what data was and where it was at. Um, similar for like a TED Talk, um, what conference it was at, um, what location, and the date. We'll go over that later. Um, it does count toward your 150 added words limit, so in every interp, um, you're only allowed to add 150 words under California rules um, that are not from the original author. This does count toward that limit, so you keep that in mind. Um, and the title, author, and location, place, date of original delivery does count toward that limit, except in POI, um, since the titles and authors are usually so long because there are several of them, um, they don't count. But for all the other events, they do count. So in your intro, I want you to succinctly and clearly tell us, one, what is the speech about? Two, what is the point the author is trying to get across? And three, why should we care? What will we get from this? Think of this as after the judge and the audience and your competitors leave for the day and beyond the scope of the competition when they get home, what will they remember from a piece and what will they be able to take from it? What kind of meaning? can they extract and carry over into their lives? That kind of thing. Um, yeah, basically what I said. So here are some examples for DI. Um, in DI, it's usually more serious, obviously. So currently, people hesitate to expression, express their emotions because society deems that weak. Unfortunately, these limitations force them to bury their hurt, anguish, and insecurities deep inside for fear of being labeled. After years of avoiding and hiding his depression and anxiety, with the encouragement of his wife Brioni, Tim learns to accept himself for who he is. His story prompts us to challenge the stigma of opening up about opening up about our true feelings, something so fundamental to our humanity, yet often lost. Fake it till you make it, by Brioni Kimmings and Tim Graeber. So let's go back and look for these three things. What is this speech about? Okay, clearly there's um it's about people not expressing their emotions, especially of mental health issues, because um, it's difficult and vulnerable to do so. It's also about this main character, Tim, his wife, Brioni, and the challenges they navigate. Um, what is the point the author is trying to get across? Pretty clearly, it's something about acceptance of not only our own feelings, but being able to open up about them, right? The intro does suggest that. And finally, why should we care? Um, the significance of this piece is that we need to open up our true feelings. It's critical to our humanity, yet it's difficult to do. And because of stigmatization, we need to start erasing these stigmas, right? So that's kind of, obviously, you don't need to go that much in depth, but it's implied by the intro. It's what you need to think about. Now, let's look at an example for HI. Um, I'd say that a lot of times HI, the meaning of, your, uh, of the piece doesn't need to be that deep or anything and you want to have more jokes. Um, Self-deprecating ones are fine. So let's look at this example. When I was young, my mother used to tell me that if I went to bed with wet hair, I would develop cancer and die. Well, you know what, Mom? I'm still alive, so screw your rumors. As with all of us, we've been told ridiculous things while growing up. While many of these are told to us to try to protect us from the unknown, sometimes it is from facing our fears do we finally discover who we truly are. So join Ruben as he tries to navigate through the rumors that his grandmother tells him in It's Raining Meatballs by Joe Schmo. Clearly, a more humorous, he's a personal anecdote, whether it's real or not, nobody will tell. 
Um, you can choose not to use a personal anecdote as well. Um, and yeah, the point is much more lighthearted. It's kind of what you're going for. Okay, last one. Oh, I. When we hear of North Korea, we immediately think of Kim Jong-un, ballistic missiles, and military parades. But what we forget are about are the people who live under this regime, who are forced to endure starvation, government surveillance, and an authoritarian cult. Meet Yeonmi Park. Did I pronounce that right? Yeonmi Park. A North Korean who successfully flees the Kim regime in hopes of gaining freedom in the United States. Through her escape, she finally realizes that compassion and kindness must all be taught, urging us to speak up for those North Koreans who are voiceless. This is Yeonmi Park's TED Talk, How I Escaped from North Korea and Found Freedom, delivered in April 2019 at the TED Conference in Vancouver. Okay, at first, clearly we see um, the author and title are present in the intro at the end, also with the date and the location. So that's something you need for your OI. Now, um, typically in intros, we do want to introduce the main character or the speaker, Yeonmi Park, and we get some background and context about her experiences. And finally, really important is, subver um, in this case, we're subverting the idea of, of like a simple, of simple image of an authoritarian as one with ballistic missiles, strong manpower, that kind of thing. And we're, and we're um, bringing the audience into like a more narrative approach or people who are suffering under depression, right? And looking at it from a different lens. That's kind of the point. And also, um, this intro mentions that the power of compassion and kindness, right? That's something we can take away beyond the context and scope of the speech or the competition. That's what you want to include. Now, some common issues people run into when writing uh, that you want to avoid include um, not putting the title, author, location, etc. in the right place. Um, you always need it at the end of your intro, not the middle, not the beginning, but at the end. As we see in all three examples, you can go back and check them. For HI intros, um, a lot of drafts I see tend to have these long descriptive anecdotes and it just becomes really bogged down. Cut down on those and jump right to the humor. For DI and OI intros, let's be more specific and concrete on the main point of the piece, right? Um, no more than one sentence of generalization at the beginning, maybe to just pull the audience in. Um, a lot of times I see me, oh, the speech is about toxic masculinity and it's bad, period. Or it's about cancer and it sucks, right? There's always something that's deeper, like, Maybe it's about how we respond to cancer or how we help those with loved ones dealing with cancer go through it and, and how we push push back on despite the awkward circumstances, right? Maybe for toxic masculinity, it's more specific about this emasculation concept and the social implications of it and how it causes people to keep all their feelings to themselves and and like the toxic cultures or environments that creates, right? So something more specific to your piece, something that I can't just easily copy and paste and apply it to a different piece, change the title. Um, so basically a good limits test is if I can use this intro for another similar piece, then it's probably not specific enough. So that's kind of what you want to do. Um, obviously your task is now to write the intro um, and start with a a draft that can be longer or too long, uh, it's fine. Don't put a word limit on yourself and then cut later. Um, share it with your captain, your coach, get feedback on it. And then the other thing is memorize your intro early and or get it written done early, written and done early and memorize it early. A lot of people don't start an intro until like days before the tournament and then they end up having these awkward like memorization issues during round, like, start early on this so it's integrated neatly into your speech and get feedback on it as well. So that's all for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, let your captain know, or let your um, coach know. All right, cool.